In May 2021, the biggest gas pipeline in the United States suddenly went offline. It was the first time in the company's 60-year history that its entire operation shut down, all because of one compromised password. The Colonial Pipeline hack was linked to a gang of cybercriminals called Darkside and led to a spike in gas prices, as well as panic buying and fuel shortages. Just a few weeks later, a similar attack shut down the world's largest meat producer, JBS. Both companies paid hackers millions in cryptocurrency ransom to regain control of their operations and restart production. It's estimated that the number of companies impacted by ransomware has more than doubled in the first half of 2021 compared to 2020. But it's not just big companies that are taking the hit. Schools, governments, and healthcare sectors are now being targeted by this lucrative and growing business. So why is ransomware on the rise? And how are cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin helping cyber extortionists get away with it? Ransomware is a malicious program, or malware, that blocks access to files on a computer until a fee is paid to the perpetrator. And just like any other virus, it can spread between computers, bringing down whole networks. The first known ransomware attack happened back in 1989. It was distributed on floppy disks, which were handed out to attendees of a World Health Organization conference. Once an infected computer was rebooted 90 times, its files began to encrypt or lock until users sent $189 to PC Cyborg Corporation at a PO box in Panama. But over the last 30 years, ransomware has transformed from a fringe internet novelty to a huge illegal business. The cyber criminals behind ransomware, they share both the tools, the talent, the operational insight between each other. There's a, a living and breathing underground ecosystem of those operators. According to estimates, the average ransom payment made to hackers in 2020 has more than doubled compared to 2019. But beyond the act of extortion, there can be an even darker side to ransomware. If you're kidnapping data rather than people, it's probably not quite so emotional. Your first reaction will be, well, this is a commercial problem. However, that's not necessarily the case. Medical and healthcare providers are among those who report a rise in attacks. That's because in situations where disruptions could be a matter of life or death, institutions often have to respond quickly with payments to resume service. In 2020, 560 U.S. healthcare facilities were hit by ransomware. And a 2021 nationwide attack on the Irish healthcare service left it scrambling to recover for weeks. Under-resourced health systems work to hackers' advantage. You have to weigh up costs and benefits of saying, well, what does it mean for my patients if their cancer treatment is interrupted for three or six months while I restore their patient records from backup? The threat of cyber attacks and ransomware is increasingly stirring debate on the global stage. Some attacks are even alleged to have been state-sanctioned. One of the reasons why hackers often don't get caught is because of differing laws and regulations and a lack of global coordination. That's one aspect of why we see so much cybercrime and why, why it emanates uh, uh, from, from, from Russia, from, from China, possibly from North Korea. Um, possibly from Iran. They're, they're, they're countries that don't have a problem with their criminals targeting Western interests. If you are a cyber criminal that's based in a country that doesn't have an extradition agreement with a country in which you're committing your crimes, then the probability of punishment is zero. But something else has also played a big part in the rise of ransomware. The anonymity provided by cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin has made ransomware even more appealing to cyber criminals. It's making it very easy to send very large amounts across borders, which, you know, you know, uh, banking regulations, if you're if you're wire transferring any reasonable amount across a, a, a international border, people know about that. The SEC knows about that and they track it. Um, and this this is much more difficult for them to track. And as hackers move and exchange cryptocurrency through a maze of accounts and across countless borders, it can become virtually untraceable. It's difficult to know exactly how much criminal activity relies on cryptocurrency. Tech experts agree, however, that ransomware is on the rise. 
with retrieval of payments and prosecutions remaining few and far between. Cyber criminals have innovated and have created a marketplace for ransomware so that whoever originates the code can sell it to people who carry out the crime and take a cut. So people who want to get into cybercrime no longer have to be digital wizards. They can just buy an encryption key. Thanks to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, hackers feel so secure in their anonymity that they even set up customer care websites and portals to help victims send payments. They operate very much like a business. You can actually open a ticket sometimes and get troubleshooting advice. Those communications primarily happen in these dark web forums. The forums look like any other internet forum for the most part. They have usernames and avatars, and they even have like reputation scores. That's where the advertisements happen. That's where like, hey, I've stolen this data and I'm trying to, trying to sell it to someone else. Many victims of ransomware attacks simply pay up as having sensitive information released on the dark web or going through the process of trying to recover lost files can be even more costly and arduous. But that's not always the case. In 2018, the city of Atlanta spent $2.6 million to recover their systems and data instead of paying a $52,000 ransomware demand. And in 2020, Baltimore refused a $76,000 ransom demand and incurred over $18 million in recovery costs and lost revenues. One of the biggest considerations is insurance. In many cases, it makes more economic sense for cybercrime insurers to cover the ransom demand rather than reimburse a client for loss of revenue and costly attempts to restore corrupted files. But this increase in payment sums has also meant that ransomware is a viable strategy for cyber criminals. And the more people pay, the likelier a hacker is to hack again. Some even say that's part of the reason a ransomware economy is staying afloat. In theory, you do want to ban ransoms, but if you look at any circumstances in which ransoms have been banned, the outcome has been frankly worse. The question really is, do you want to put thousands of cancer patients' lives at risk? Are you happy for the East Coast of America to go dark? then everyone says, well, I think in this case, we'd rather pay a ransom. The threat of cyber attacks and ransomware is increasingly being recognized at a national level. In the US, the Biden administration is asking Congress for $9.8 billion for federal civilian cybersecurity in 2022. And the Department of Energy is requesting $201 million to bolster its cybersecurity. Ultimately, Authorities hope one of the biggest deterrents could be stronger regulation around cryptocurrencies. That would halt avenues for payment. Or like with the Colonial Pipeline hack where the FBI recovered over half of the ransom paid to hackers, an increased effort by law enforcement to track down cyber criminals. Simply, you know, making ransom payment illegal or trying to regulate cryptocurrency to where it's very difficult to make the payment um, is is basically further punishing the victim who's currently has, has two choices, right? It's like, go, go out of business, uh, or if you're like a hospital, people die, or pay a ransom. Let's come up with an option C, which is government sort of subsidized program to help companies with the cyber hygiene problem. Let's say 70% of it would be focused on prevention. And then if it does happen, uh, a program to help companies recover individual vigilance helps too. So be careful what you click on. We're basically leaving the door unlocked for these guys and then complaining when they rob us. <laughs> and it's like, well, uh, you know, that we, we all know we should lock our doors. Uh, that's common sense. <laughs>